Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Osman Ali and the video which I'm recording is a numerical on value of risk. Uh, kindly keep in mind that I am calculating the VAR or value of, of uh, at risk numerical for a single currency actually, it's not more than one currency. The currency for which I am interested to know the, the value at risk is the Brazilian real. So, uh, our today's portrait for the Brazilian real and the forecasted portrait for the next one ahead. Uh, that's, that's my objective. We are given actually the portrait and using this portrait we would love to know what will be the Brazilian real one month uh, estimated value in terms of dollars. So, uh, our today's portrait is one Brazilian real is equal to 0. 4558 dollars I will mark it yellow just to keep it in mind that that's the spot rate and uh, using the value at risk method uh, we need to determine the maximum percentage loss actually uh, as you know from the PPT chapter uh, from the PPT section as well that value at risk actually calculate the one day maximum loss for us and it can calculate one month or other long term uh, loss for us but one thing is it will always ha help us just to know the maximum loss that we can have for one day or two days or one month or more than a month but the loss factor only the lower factor only not the, the higher factor okay remember this thing then uh, for the next month we had to calculate this percentage loss with the confidence level of 95 percent okay we have different confidence levels actually you know 95 percent confidence level 90 confidence level 97.5 99 percent confidence level so we are actually required to calculate the maximum possible loss if there is any uh, based on 95 percent confidence level using this spot exchange rate that we are given with and along with this information there is another information that's the six months the last six months data of this exchange rate is given to us you can see it here this is the month end of the last six uh, year uh, months actually okay like and the at the end of month one uh, this was the price of Brazilian real then at the end of the second month at the end of the third month at the end of the fourth month at the end of the fifth month and at the end of the sixth month which is the recent one so we are required to do what we are required to calculate that how much is the maximum percentage loss that can occur number one number two which is not given to us in the numerical but I will calculate that is what will be the or it is given actually in the numerical as well that what will be the price of the, uh, the Brazilian real if this maximum loss that we are expecting if it occurs okay assuming that the we expect that the Brazilian real value will change by minus two percent why I'm taking minus here because I am interested in knowing the maximum percentage loss so loss is minus actually okay by the way you may get uh, have a question in your mind that's from where we can calculate minus two percent so if you remember the purchasing power parity discussion that we had and there was a formula of EFE e representing the change and F was the foreign currency. The same formula can be used actually to know how much percentage change can occur. So that's not a very unique thing to do. Confidence level, you had to set it for your own self. So it's again not a rocket science. While spot rate is widely available on the Google and historical data is also available on Google, Yahoo Finance or any other websites. So let's go through the answer. Let's explore uh, what would be the value of that. Now, in my first step, when I have these six months data available, I want you to think of financial management or statistics subject where you, you use you, or you learn how to calculate standard deviation actually. So assume that you know the process of that variance and standard deviation from statistics and financial management subject. If I calculate the standard deviation of this, it will be 4.09% rounded values. Please remember this thing. Now, you can do a little bit practice with yourself on standard deviation, actually. I want you to do a little bit practice uh, on your Excel sheets or on your pages so that it can be a little bit fresh in your mind. I want you to save the time, so I just wrote the answer of it here. 
So the standard deviation uh, should be your first step to calculate in real life if you wish to apply this concept. That I have already done and I got a standard deviation of 4.09%. Once I have calculated the standard deviation in the first step, I should move to the second step which is to calculate that how much expected loss can occur, maximum expected loss can happen to the Brazilian real actually. Now I'm calculating it for one month, that's why I have written here maximum one month loss. If you are calculating it for one day, you can write here maximum one day. But sir, then how, like how would the formula know that the it is for one month or it is for one day? Very simple. Everything rely on this two percent, okay? If this 2% represents one month, then this is also one month. But if this 2% represents one day, then it represents one day. Sir, how would we know that 2% represents one month? Very simple. Think of that formula in your mind. EF was equal to inflation domestic minus, uh, sorry, uh, 1 plus inflation domestic divided by 1 plus inflation foreign whole minus 1. So if you are using inflation data, and if that inflation data is monthly data, ladies and gentlemen, then this minus 2, if calculated from that data, would also represent one month. If the inflation data you are using in that EF formula, uh, annual inflation data is used, then this represents one year. If you are using the inflation data on one day basis, daily basis data, then this represents one day. So it's connected there. Now. So the maximum one month loss will be, I would multiply the percentage of change that is expected in the currency, which if you see here is minus two. This is what we expect to happen. And then I will multiply, uh, sorry, minus the multiplicated result of what? One tail left. You know, these, this concept of war is connected to the risk factor and confidence interval assuming that the data is normally distributed. By the way, what do we mean by normally distributed data? If you remember that majority of the data is near its mean value, think of statistics subject. Like I'm, I'm, I have just drawn a straight line here, let's say, assume there is a straight line I'm drawing, and there is a mountain type of a graph, if you remember, okay? So if the mountain is kind of like uh, tall and narrow, it's kind of normally distributed data, on the left side is called the left tail and on the right side it will be called as the right tail. I am 100% sure you have studied these things in your statistics subject. So we would focus on one tail only because I'm only interested in one value, that's the loss value. I'm not interested in the minimum and the maximum means the loss or the profit value. I'm just interested in the minus side. If I'm interested in the minus side, then it, it would be wiser for me to write the left as well, one tail left. By the way, why these, these kind of words are used, one tail left or one tail right or two tail or uh, left or two tail right, it's because of this table. The, the, this is the table from which we're going to copy the data. These are the figures for one tail. And this is actually the error one, error term. If my confidence interval is 95%, so 100 minus 95% means 5%, which is 0 0.05. So I'm going to use the tail values here. And the tail values is 1.64. By the way, um, we will only use 1.64. Then I will multiply this tail value with the standard deviation of the Brazilian real movements. So what was the standard deviation that we calculated based on these six months? The standard deviation was t calculated to be 4.09%. So look at this. I have shifted the data or uh, incorporated the data as percentage change is 2%, so that is minus 0 0.02. This minus is in the formula. 1.645 is actually the one tail value of 95% confidence. You can see here 1.645. And then the standard deviation uh, of the Brazilian real, which is 4.09, so it can be written as 0 0.0409. We multiply 0 0.0409 with 1.64, we will get 0 0.0673, and then minus 0 0.02, minus 0 0.0673, uh, 
we get minus 0 0.0873. These are basic mathematics, so you, you know that very easily. And then you multiply that to get your answer in percentage. So it is expected that there will be a maximum loss of 8.73% in the Brazilian real value. You will have this much loss, okay, based on the scientific calculation. Now, if this is my loss, okay that I will have a maximum one month loss of 8.73 this much loss will incur in the Brazilian real then assuming this much loss if it occurs if this happens actually then what will be the price of the Brazilian real after one month so for that you will use the same formula that we have studied in interest rate parity and purchasing power parity discussions topics forward rate will be equal to spot rate multiplied by 1 plus the change. So we used to write here EF in uh, interest rate parity and purchasing power parity. I have written here ML. The only reason why I'm written here ML is representing maximum loss. Okay. So how much maximum loss is expected? 8.73% which is minus 0 0.0873. This minus represents the loss actually, which is shifted from here. One remains one, and this is the SR, which is spot rate. So if you remember, we got the spot rate at the start of the numerical, which is one Brazilian real is equal to 0 0.4558. So that's we get. If I open this parenthesis bracket, so plus get when multiplied with minus, it will become minus. And then 1 minus 0 0.0873 will give us a value of 0 0.9127, which I will multiply with the spot rate, and we get a value, a forward rate of one month, that one Brazilian real will be equal to 0 0.4160 dollars, actually. So it's, it's the same thing, if you see, that's kind of the, the change. And this is the forward rate same formula that we have used in our previous discussions as well. But actually this change, unlike relying only on inflation or only on interest, this change is comparatively more realistic. It's considering the risk factor. If you remember the in, in, in uh, entrepreneurship, we have this affordable loss principle that whenever the decisions are made regarding entrepreneurship's investments, so one can look into the profits, how much profits the, the business can offer to me, maximum profits, then the chances of investing money would be high. But entrepreneurs look little differently and they do not, uh, they're not attracted by the profit, they are actually attracted by the, op uh, the, the innovation opportunity and the loss which they can afford. So that's that thing. I wanted to know that how much loss I may have and can I afford it or not. So this is the value or value at risk numerical. That's how you calculate it for a single currency actually. I hope you got the concept. Thank you very much ladies and gentlemen. Stay safe.